Over the years, I've reviewed quite a few Diana rifles, and I don't think they have ever failed to put a smile on my face. Well, maybe it's time now to get serious, because they're now bringing the manufacturing back to Germany, apparently. Is it going to be Vorsprung durch Technik? and welcome to AAR On Air. This week I'll be taking a look at the long rifle with an equally long name from Diana, the Model 54 Air King Pro Laminate. And the last time I saw this many lines was when I was held back after class and forced to write, I shall not pull Susie's pigtails 200 times. I must admit, this, like Susie, is a bit of a looker in this bold red laminate finish. And the first thing I'll say is it is a quality finished item. Let's start with the stats and then jump to the walk around, shall we? This is 1120 millimeters or 44 inches long with a 440 millimeters or 17.3 inch barrel and is on the heavier side at 4.7 kilograms or 10.7 pounds. It is available in both 177 and 22 calibers. It is a single shot side lever springer and has been designed and built to produce between 24 and 26 joules, which is between 17.8 and 19.2 foot pounds. Now that is a nice healthy power level for an all round rifle. But this is the UK version, so I'm expecting this to have been restricted down to sub 12 foot pound per power levels. <laughs> Naturally, I'm going to check that out a little later. Let's get on with the walk around first. Starting as usual from the front. The first thing to do is to highlight that you have a choice of ends, so to speak. You can have an attachment that has an adjustable open front sight to mate up with the pre-fitted rear adjustable sights, or you can elect to stick with the pre-fitted front adjustable barrel weight. Now, this can be adjusted by adding more O-rings to move the weight further forward to help improve the accuracy if needed. Naturally, if you're using this weight system, you're likely to be fitting a scope to the 11mm dovetail rail already in place along the top. Blimey! We've barely moved off the front of the barrel and options seem to be coming out all over the place. There is no silencer supplied or fitted to this Model 54 and we will be checking out the volume a little later. But quite possibly, as with most springers, more noise comes from the spring rather than the end of the barrel. That said, I wouldn't put this into a hunting category. More target specific. No doubt someone is going to disagree. Fine. But you are likely to only get one shot off, at which point everything else is going to scatter. The fact that it only has a swivel stud at the front and not one at the back would also suggest to me that they're to take a bipod or the like rather than a carry around the forest strap. Whilst we're around this area, there is that laminated stock with the Diana embossed forestock. It is stippled at the front, but nothing heavy. This makes up with the stippling in the grip area, which is equally not heavy. The butt has no adjustable cheek piece, but does have a rubberized and shock absorbing butt pad. You know, I'm not sure if an adjustable cheek piece is needed or if it would actually spoil the lines of this lovely stock. Back to the top. This is a side lever. And naturally, this does take up a lot of space on this rifle. It is a long lever, which is no bad thing because this will naturally make cocking easier. Now, the whole system 
there is a built-in safety in mind. There is a latch system that allows you to use the lever in a manner that doesn't demand cocking in one long action. You can pull this in stages and it will safely lock into place and not try to close up and trap any phalanges you may have in the way, potentially reducing your ability to count to a full 10. There are around five stages and then the last one is fully cocked. Up to the point of any of the five initial stages, you can decock the rifle with the aid of the latch on the left hand side. Be careful if you do try this because there is a lot of force waiting to let go on you with this sidearm. The last and final cocking action moves the whole body of the gun backwards into the stock and automatically applies the safety located at the rear. Naturally, before you close it up, you'll need to drop in your pellet into the back of the revealed barrel, and they do suggest in the manual that you seat it all the way into the barrel. Once you've done that, press the button on the side, close to, you're now ready for the shot. The trigger is a two-stage adjustable item and can be adjusted without the need to take the gun apart. It is interesting, the floating action of the main body of the rifle within the stock does reduce that recoil, making a much smoother shooting experience. Before we get this out on the range, let's just drop it over the chronograph, shall we, and check this is a full UK spec version. This is a 177 caliber and I chose some 8.44 grain pellets for the test. It saw a maximum of 769 feet per second, which equates to 11.09 foot pounds or 15.03 joules. So yes, it is a UK spec version and kicking out reasonably healthy power levels. Whilst I was testing it, I thought I would put some heavier 10.34 grain pellets in, and this saw 701 feet per second, which is a higher 11.29 foot pounds or 15.3 joules. Again, respectable enough figures for a new gun that will probably settle in nicely with use. Time to get a scope fitted on this Diana and get it out on the range. It's a springer, so I'm not expecting to be putting pellet on pellet, but let's give it a go, shall we? How about 35 meters for this test? The Diana, model 54, side lever. Nice, I've popped a marksman scope on, because it's the only one that I've actually got. Some suitable uh, dovetail rails uh, rings, sorry, on it. So I'll pop that on. I do like the colour of this. It's really rather nice. It's beautifully made back in Germany. So that's what a lot of manufacturers seem to be doing these days. I like that lock open, which makes it safe and secure. Whilst you pop in your pellets, obviously all individual, through the top. Then what you've got is that safety lever. Press that, click back, you're ready. You can, of course, shoot this with open sights. I'm not going to do that. I'm shooting with the scope on top. Okay. Non-springer shooter. Here goes. I've done a sighting round so now we'll take it a little serious I'll take that for a start lock it into place it's got a nice recoil system on this to take that sting out of it whoops I've dropped that cold day for Messing about with 177 pellets. I'm using the QYSs just because that's what I've got available, and they're quite a nice pellet to be fair. C. 
So far, so good. It's an automatic safety on it, so it clicks in every time. Mmm. Now I don't shoot that many springers, in all honesty. So when one behaves like that, I'm pretty pleased. Very pleased, in fact. Mmm. That's starting to shoot like some PCPs. It's a little bit awkward trying to do it overhand like this. Nice smooth action. It is a weighty item, but that gives it its balance and its stability. Got a nice trigger to it. So I do like that lock open piece, which makes it nice and safe and secure. I feel like I should stop there because my luck's going to run out in a minute. That is really nice grouping. Yes, it's a very calm day. It's a very cold day, but it's a very calm day. One more. Yeah. They're going through the same hole. Well, Diana, made in Germany. You made a nice product there, very nice. It is, it's a little strange because you've got the action moving back in the stock, which is that recoil system. So that takes you by surprise a little bit, but it works. It takes the, the kick out of it, a lot of the kick out of it. The trigger is nice. I, I can't really fault it. Put a decent scope on it, I say, which is the marksman that I've dropped on it. And those are the results that you can get down range. That is impressive. That is very impressive. Yes. Back to the studio. Well, not bad at all. I do get it with Springer shooters. They are a little more challenging and will hone your skills. And there is also something nostalgic and therapeutic about loading individual pellets each time. The fact that this has a recoilless system incorporated into it that does work adds to the desirability and ease of use from my point of view. Well, it is a little heavy, but I feel they have made it that way for maybe added stability. They thought about that front end to help you get the best out of the accuracy. The stock I do like, and with the right scope on, is a nice piece of kit. Price-wise, well, this German-built rifle from Diana comes in at around £650 UK, and for that you're getting a well-thought-through and quality-finished Springer rifle that is likely to last you years and years, and is likely to be something you will teach your children and grandchildren to shoot with. I thought I would enjoy shooting this Diana, and I have. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review too. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe and hit the old alarm bell to be notified when the next reviews are out. There are lots of platforms to join in the chats with. The AAR website is worth a visit and of course a big thank you to Vector Air for all their help as always. 
Finally, the main thanks, as always, goes out to you for watching and supporting the channel. Please, stay safe and shoot safe. And I'll see you next week. Bye for now.